Hi, this is Simone. Today I want to set up this Coco Daisy Mini Daisy Dory as a journal. I loved doing this in last year. I did it in June and July and I totally enjoyed doing these kinds of memory keeping spreads in my Daisy Dory. However, there were then lots of pages left that I needed to fill, which um, didn't leave a lot of room for different kinds of creativity. And in July, I actually used my mini Daisy Dory for on a smaller scale for the exact same thing. And I totally enjoyed it. And so I had the idea of using a mini Daisy Dory for the whole month and just not planning in a Coco Daisy insert because I'm using something else for that right now. And let, yeah, do some the things that I enjoy on a different canvas than planning. So what I'm tr going to do this in this video is I'm going to use all the supplies that I pulled. The supplies are mainly from all of the Coco Daisy kits. There is the planner kits, the classified kits, the add-on papers from the memory keeping kits and all of the memory keeping kits. And some of the supplies like this and this that I pulled from my stash that I thought would look nice for October. And I am not sure how I'm going to do this yet. So I'm just going to take you along with me and we'll tell you all about the process and my thoughts behind it. What I'm definitely going to do is taking the staples out and reinforcing it with um, embroidery thread. So let's start. So this took me a long, almost a whole uh, morning and I had so much video footage that you just need to tell me at the end of the video if this is too long for you and what I should cut out. I had such a hard time speeding up the things, taking out stuff. So please bear with me and tell me what I need to do differently if I ever do another video like this. So my thoughts here. So I took the staples out, then I counted all the divided pages because I actually, I only really need this insert for the divided sections for my memory planning and everything else needs to be filled differently. Now I have several ideas for the filling. And so my first thought was, I'm just gonna take all the pages in between out and then I have it all. But I had so many ideas for all the rest of the things that I would have felt like nothing would fit in there. I wanted to add papers and I don't want them in between the divided pages. And so I just had to leave them in. And I think, as I said before, printing a three by four photo is just adding one photo. This could be exactly what I need in my life right now. I'm folding these papers are from the pocket memory keeping kit. They are six by six and the passport size insert, as you can see, is wider than uh, three inches. And so when you fold the paper in half, um, it will not go all the way to the edge. However, I really do like the people call them junk journal. If that's a word you haven't heard before, Google it, it's amazing. I love different textures in my notebook. That's why I really wanted to add more cardstock in there. And I also uh, love when they are not all the same size. So that was my idea. One page I folded right exactly in, in half. So there is, it doesn't go to the edge on both sides both pages actually and the other one I folded so that one of the papers one of the pages was exactly the same size as the rest of the papers and one was quite shorter. Um, I added them in where I thought they would go. I made sure that they were folded. I used my bone folder to grease them. Grease them? Is that 
the right word, I don't know. And then I just repunched the holes where the staples were and added one hole right in the middle in between the two holes and then I'm stitching. I'm stitching um, up and then back down and then I'm making a knot and then what I'm doing here is just trying to tie in the ends into this notebook so they don't loosen as easily and then I'm cutting off the leftover thread and that is how easy sewing a notebook uh, reinforcing a notebook that is stapled is I have a really good experience I have been doing this for um, over a year now and reinforcing my notebooks this way and none of them came apart ever so I think you can definitely try this method it's super easy to do I used these clips to hold the pages together and I'm flipping through the pages to show you what I am did and then I said in the beginning that I was going to add a tag here and so that's what I'm doing right now I'm not particularly fond of this double page spread and so I'm not doesn't matter um, that I'm gluing those pages together and what I did I used the tag as a guideline for my glue and now um, I can just slide it in I used a hole punch and punched a half circle out and then one this is one of the papers that doesn't go all the way to the edge and I loved the way this looked and I saw this tag I think it was from the memory keeping kit I'm not sure um, and just stuck it onto the pattern paper so now that I'm done with setting setting up the book as where the pages go and such I'm going to work on the cover and these rubber rubbery things came in the pocket memory keeping kit I think there were six included there is a boo there's a pumpkin and a leaf and I glued them on and since I wasn't so sure if that they would stick and also because I staples just give this great texture uh, element I decided to staple them down which works really well because I'm going to staple the squirrel as well and something about this October die cut or a sticker actually that is on the sticker sheet in the planner kit just I want this to be on the front of my Daisy Dory I love having it there and so um, I'm usually making sure that I can get it onto the cover I stapled the scroll I that was from my stash and since the staples show through to the inside I'm covering the inside cover because um, this way the staples won't um, scratch on the paper and it just looks nicer it looks finished more finished and then I am wondering what I'm going to do on this page am I going to add stuff and then I'm going through all the die cuts which having so much to choose from is often is a big problem for me because I can never make up my mind so what I did here and I'm showing this to you right now because I thought it just so that I can talk about it is I picked out my most favorite ones the ones that I thought would go on the pages most easily and I'm narrowing down the choices that I can use so they're out there I'm still not convinced that the leaf on the inside cover will do and so I decide I'm moving on and I'm just not going to use it <laughs> right now um, I there is one hello October sticker on this sticker sheet that I just pulled out and I may, just wanted to make sure and look at the size of the sticker because I wanted to put it on top of the Monday on the first of the first day of the month and I wanted to see if there was enough room if I left it like that so um, this washi tape came in the classified planner edition it is amazing however when you use the mini Daisy Dory it is quite overwhelming and very very dominating so 
um, I started to decorate or add the days of the week for the first week and then I wasn't sure if I was going to keep on doing this for the rest of the month. I was thinking about maybe adding do, doing one week at a time um, and then I pushed it aside. I wasn't sure if I was going to do this later on for the during the month when I was working on it or not. I had this Oops, I'm sorry for <laughs> moving the camera. I should have cut this out. I never realized when going through the uh, video that that was there. Now I'm using clear packaging tape to stick the front of the stamp set to the backing sheet. Um, I don't know if I saw this trick somewhere or if I came up with it myself. I'm definitely not taking credit for it, but you can. Um, copy this trick if you're a stamper like me. I love having the backing paper of my stamps right there. They're never going to be oh, missing. They're always there and it just makes stamping so much easier. Um, so there's four divided pages and I don't know what I was going to talk about. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Um, there's four divided pages and I'm just wondering or not sure if I'm going to start each Monday on a new page or not this month. And if I'm going to continue doing this, um, don't know if this is going to be that way all the time. I just thought that I could give myself room and leave some of the divided sections open, add a big sticker or a die cut or a stamp, just as I showed you before. Um, I decided to add this die cut leaf right here and then I saw the weekend die cut banner that I was going to add here that you just saw, but the big washi wouldn't work. So I just picked out a stamp set that I had in my stash and decided to stamp the days for Saturday and Sunday so that the weekend banner wouldn't be so dominated. Um, and as you might have guessed, I decided I was just going to use the weekly stickers, not stickers, the washi tape all through the month. Um, I don't want to risk falling off the bandwagon because the monthly TN isn't set up all the way through the month. Um, I want this to be as easy on me on a daily basis as possible. And that is why I just am going to work with the washi tape. It is so, so pretty and I'm definitely be able to work around the boldness. It's, it's not that it's this sounds so negative. I don't want to be negative. It's just something that you have to embrace and um, that you have to counter design while you are working on the weekly spreads by big bold hand lettering or other letter stickers, maybe contrasting colors, things like that help, definitely help. So. You saw me that I was working on Halloween because I know that I wanted to add part of this paper into my book. And so I said, okay, October 31st is going to be that. I'm the last divided section, or it's actually the second to last because I couldn't just couldn't count um, and skipped one of the pages from the back side. Um, I added that here and then I worked my way through the book. Um, and just so that I made sure that I had enough space for all the dates, but that I also had enough breathing room, as I just explained before. So as you can see, I'm going back and forth. I'm not going in a very logical way. I'm doing what I'm feeling at the moment. And yeah, I had this currently die cut that I want to put into this um, insert somewhere that I still have, hadn't found a, a place, but then I thought the October banner in the front would work really nicely. I will end up putting the currently banner right where you just saw it. 
and then I'm going back in and adding in more washi, more washi strips, more days. I divided all of the pages, I added all the stickers and then I'm going to add in um, the rest of the days and the dates. What I did when I came closer to filling up the book, I used my pencil to write out the dates so to make sure that I would really have enough room and not cover up a blank space that I would later need as a day, if you know what I mean. There is a saying that didn't bother me. It just, I wanted to use this week banner in the Daisy Dory and somehow I ended up only having space for it right there. And it didn't look good with the saying right underneath it. And so I covered it up with washi tape. And then instead of using the washi tape for the days, uh, for these three days in that month, I used the stickers that came on this functional sticker sheet that you see on the left right here. And then I'm finally committing to the currently die cut that I have been ooing and eyeing about for a, a long time. And what I'm doing you, most of the time is just flipping through and looking where I can add even more die cuts. I had these two spiders that I really liked. I loved that spooky saying. And as you can see, I it takes a while to make up my mind. And since I added this little vampire right um, on the bottom of the page and I knew that I wouldn't have enough room to journal about that day, I decided to just give Sunday a whole page and that's what it looked like here. I kind of didn't like that the happy Halloween was so taken away or so apart from the top part of the page and so adding that little pumpkin witch was perfect. So my idea for this vellum which is so so beautiful was to just fold it around the insert and then add it in like another like dashboards into a traveler's notebook. However I kind of liked having this attached to the front of my insert. Since the insert is so bulky I knew that uh, measuring the insert size and then putting it around, uh, cutting it to the si right size would result in a smaller uh, vellum. But then I had the idea to just lightly attach it to the back side of the cover. And so this is a cover on the cover, f so to speak. And then um, since I still had an October die cut, which I'm looking for right now, and it takes a long time, I decided I was going to add um, uh, just some more die cuts to the front. I s have so many and why not say October on three or four different pages, pages. I definitely won't forget that this month is October. And yeah, so I think this is done. I absolutely love how this looks. I cannot wait to start. Um, Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day and yeah, creating with me. I hope you found some inspiring things while I was working and I cannot wait to share this October journey with you. Here are some close-ups of some of the things that I created. I think that's it. What are you going to do in October? How excited are you for Halloween? I'm a sucker for it even though I don't really celebrate it's just I love all the colors and the decoration there are some more videos on screen right now if you want to keep on watching I hope to chat with you soon um, definitely subscribe to my Instagram if you want to see how this evolves during the month of October I haven't planned on filming me doing this because I want to do this on a daily basis until next time um, I hope to share a flip through. That's for sure. See you then. Bye.